Well, if you're like me or any of the clients that we've helped design solar systems for around here, you want a lot of power to meet the demands of your rig and this modern lifestyle we've come to enjoy. That can only mean one thing. You're going to find yourself in a predicament where you want to install these large commercial and residential style solar panels on the top of your curved roof bus. And that presents a lot of predicaments. Luckily, Ben and I here at Chrome Yellow have figured out over the years a system that we really love for installing panels that keeps your system modular, flexible, and gives you the option to install a deck without too much headache down the road if you should choose to do so. It uses a lot of off-the-shelf parts that you can get from a local solar distributor. You'll get something that's not only purpose-built for installing and mounting solar panels, but hurricane rated and comes with the satisfaction and peace of mind of knowing that you did something the right way. My name is Chuck Cassie. On today's video, I'll be showing you how we install solar panels on the roofs of our buses. At the heart of our solar panel mounting system is the use of this commercially available solar panel racking system made by Iron Ridge. This is their XR1000 line. It is the strongest solar racking system that they offer and it uses an aluminum extruded rail like this with a T-slot in the top which gets bolted to the roof of the bus like this using L brackets. These L brackets get bolted to the roof and then the rail gets bolted to the L bracket and then in the top of each rail you will take these UFOs or universal fastening objects that Iron Ridge makes. They slot into this track here and then you tighten them down and they clamp your panels down. If you're going to be building a deck you could also use these, oops, you could also use those to hold your deck boards down as well. They're an amazing product and these right here uh, at four inch on center spacing with your L feet are rated to hurricane force winds of above 154 miles per hour. Now our spacing is gonna be putting an L bracket at every single rib, which is about every 26 inches. So this will be rated to even more than that. And I can attest to their performance because we just had a bus survive a massive hurricane in Puerto Rico using this exact same racking system with no issues whatsoever. So I can promise you it works very well. Now for affixing our L brackets to the roof, we use stainless steel hardware. We use these 3 8 inch, this is a three and a half inch long stainless steel bolt. And we use a nylock locking nut on the inside and we threw bolt directly through the rib of the bus. That gives us the strongest connection possible. And you could probably, you know, lift the bus up by our rack rails once they're installed, to be honest with you. Now, if you look, the curve of the roof means that this straight up 90 degree angled L bracket won't work. And so we actually attach a piece of quarter inch thick by three quarter inch wide aluminum bar stock to the bottom of each one of these. We used to weld them on, but that was a lot of work and we get just as good a results for what we're doing by epoxying them to the bottom. My friend Jonathan Roberts at Sojourner's Way is actually starting to make specialty curved brackets for buses, but I couldn't get my hands on those in time. And you know, we've been doing this for eight years and have not had an issue with these. So we use that to seal that up. We pack the bottoms of our brackets with butyl rubber tape and we really pack it on thick. You can get this stuff on Amazon, lots of other places. And that gets squeezed out as we tighten the bolt down and, and the uh, racking rail and everything gets secured and just kind of spooges out a little bit. Now, once we have everything bolted and installed, you've got two rails running perpendicular down the side of your bus that you can attach your solar panels to decking, whatever you want. And what I love is that it's a modular and flexible system where once it's installed, it gives you mounting options for almost anything you want to put on your, the roof of your bus, not just solar panels. And you never have to poke a hole in the roof of your bus again. And I have no doubts that this is the strongest method that you're going to see for flat mounting fixed panels using commercially available hardware that exists. If you want to find this type of racking hardware, contact a local solar distributor. They can usually put you in the right direction and get you set up. This stuff can be reasonably priced. Shipping can really be a bear though sometimes. So you'll wanna look into that before you go too far down that road. Next up, I'm gonna hop on the roof with my friend Ben and I'll go over how we get the layout started and what tools you're gonna to need to start getting your layout and get your holes drilled for bolting down your L feet. 
If you're not familiar with these amazing little devices of modern technology, this is called a bevel box and it is magnetic on the bottom and it uses a combination of accelerometers and a CPU to determine and tell you an angle measurement using whatever reference you give it and I'll show you how this is so useful for us. So see I can zero that out on the surface and then now as I tilt it you see how it tells me what angle I'm tilting it to? Okay let me show you how this is useful. So what we'll do is we'll take this, we need to zero it out inside the bus and what I like to use for my zero is actually this piece here that runs across the dash above the windshield. I like to zero it out there because that's as close to a, fla a flat plane or what's supposed to be a flat plane as you're going to get. Now when I go on the roof we're going to want those brackets, the L brackets to be perpendicular to this plane here. hope that makes sense so then we can bolt our rails to it just like <laughs> Well, it's just like what's happening outside there. Just like these brackets there. That's what we're going for. So I'm going to take this device up to the roof of the bus. I'm going to bring one of my L feet with me. Where did I put that guy? Here it is. And we're going to go hunting for 90 degrees up on the roof of the bus. Okay, so this is my L bracket. We're up here on the roof of the bus with Ben who is kind enough to help me do this today. I'm trying to get it ready for spray foam. So I've got my L bracket here and you can see what I'm talking about, how the slope, the angle created by that piece of flat stock that we attached to it starts to take up the curve of the bus. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is take my bevel box here and I'm going to stick it on my piece of angle. And now we're going to go down the side of the roof of the bus until that bevel box reads 90 degrees. So we're getting there, we're getting there, right about, oh, oh, right about here. You can see where it flips, gets flippy floppy. I hope that's coming clear on the display. And so now we know that at this point on the roof, if we bolt this to the roof right here, we're going to be at damn near 90 degrees perpendicular to that plane that I established inside on the dash. And what we're going to do is go ahead and mark through the hole on the bracket where this wants to be. And that's going to start to give us a rough idea where these brackets want to end up. Oh look, it's already marked. Hmm, it's almost like we've already started this. Now take a look down the side of the bus and you'll see we've got marks on every hat channel running down the side of the bus. The next move is going to be to grab a chalk line and we're going to take a chalk line and snap a line of best fit down each side. I don't have to tell you, these buses aren't square, they're not uniform, so where it ends up on this side versus that side might be different. So we're going to just kind of start to average and even things out. It's going to be nothing but compromises and disappointment, but eventually we're going to end up with two parallel lines down the side that will show us where we need to drill our holes for attaching the L feet. All right, so what we've done, which is different from what you might do, but the process is the same, is we've got all of our markings, I think you can make them out, on all the ribs going down the way where 90 degrees wants to be with our brackets that we're using. Now what we've done is, you, it, what you could do is snap a center line but because we've got these ribs that run down the, the roof of the bus because Thomas felt like that was a good thing to do, we're measuring and we verified that these, these are straight and parallel enough to trust. So what we're doing is we are measuring the distance from these ribs to each one of our marks and telling us where that mark is in reference to being parallel and perpendicular on the roof and we're going to take that, see where all of these want to be, and I think we're going to average them. I think we're going to have to come up with the best average. We're going to come up with the best average, yeah. Stay parallel to these. Staying parallel to these guys. And we'll then use that average as our final mark, and then we'll grab our chalk and snap a line doing that. It's kind of a, it's a process, you know. You establish the target and then 
figure out the best way to get there and average it all out. The main thing is we want to keep our panels and our rails parallel with themselves and with the side of the bus and then position them left and right so that we get our 90 degrees straight up and down. All right, we have done our measuring and our deducing and let me show you where we've landed. We measured all of these with reference to the distance from here to the outside of these rails on both sides and it was all over the place. Like on this side, we saw numbers as high as well, like 18 and a half and as low as 16 and a half, I think. And then on this side, we saw numbers anywhere from 17 to 19 or even maybe 16 to 19, yeah. 16 to 19. But the number that we were seeing the most was in the 18, right around 18 and then a few outliers. And so we're just going to measure down 18 inches from each side, um, from the outside of this rib and snap a line. And that's going to be our line. You know, these roofs are not perfect. They're all over the place. This is going to get us as close as we can to perfectly 90, perfectly parallel. It'll definitely be parallel and very close to perfectly 90 at every hat. All right, so you can barely see our line there. So we measured down our 18 and you can see we got close to our line there, nailed it there. Things get a little bit freaky as it goes down. You can kind of follow that down all the way to Jackson town and same, same idea here. You can see our line. So now we are good to start drilling holes. We want to drill these holes right in the center of our hat channels, three eighths inch drill bit all the way through. And then we'll put our butyl packed feet down. You can see these ancient hieroglyphics indicating the proper place to drill all throughout the bus. And Ben has got started. He is using his signature aircraft bits and getting us started with five sixteenths inch holes that we're going to then clear out to be three eighths inch holes, which is what we need. I'm going to go ahead and go down there and hang out with Matt, eat some snacks. And I need to cut some of these sections of rail down to fit. Let's go take a look at that. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. The rails I have come in 17 foot lengths. I need 20 feet for my purposes. So I've got some extra stock of that laying around. It means I'll be cutting these down to, you guessed it, three foot lengths. And my favorite tool in the shop ever is anything related to a bandsaw. And right here we've got our big Carolina brand bandsaw that I'll be using to cut these down. What I love about bandsaws is if you're cutting aluminum or steel, this all purpose blade that we have on here is good for either. That means less time spent swapping blades, messing with your tooling. You don't want to play with your tools too much. Go ahead and drop that down, see where we get. We want 36, 36 inches, right about, right about, yeah, right about there. So we'll just tighten the clamp down. Ooh, nice. Fire it up, and we'll just let it down. It's a beautiful thing. Look at the majesty here, you know? I'm gonna go have a snack while this cuts. Yeah, I got the Cummins hat on, even though I'm not a Cummins guy. Okay, check it out. So we got our two lengths here. You're probably asking, hey Chuck, how are you gonna splice them together? You know, a lot of people ask me that. Look, it's another section of extruded aluminum. And if you can guess it, this piece, also sold by Iron Ridge, it's just called a rail splice. It goes in one section like that. Check that out. And it goes in this section like this. 
check that out. Then you're spliced and then go ahead and shoot some of these self tapper screws that come with it through the back side. Lock it all down and you've got a structural bond. Get us the length that we need for this part of the project. All right, here's a little pro tip. So as I mentioned earlier, we're using all stainless steel hardware for bolting or through bolts. And if you've ever messed with stainless and stainless fasteners, you'll know that galling is a real issue. So go ahead and throw some anti-seize lubricante on there and that will prevent you from galling. Galling is what happens, it's like a mechanical welding. If you're tightening down your stainless nut with a little too much vigor, that nut's gonna seize on the bolt and the only way to move forward from there is to cut the bolt off and start over. If you throw a little bit of this anti-seize compound on there, you're not gonna have that issue, which means you'll get success. Ben's getting things ready over here. There he is. And Matt's just about got the roof prepped. He's up there. <laughs> and we're gonna get these guys installed. These are the feet and we pack the bottom of these feet with butyl rubber, which is one of our favorite sealing compounds. It's this material here. And if you're not familiar with it, you should acquaint yourself because it does a great job of stealing and it remains kind of this chewed bubble gum texture for decades. So we pack that deep, fill in the gap between the spacer and the back of our bracket. And when we tighten this down, the bolt through the center is really gonna squeeze out any leftover or excess butyl. So we get a really nice tight pack job. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, there you go. Ben, show me this stainless steel porcupine you got here. Look at that, look at that guy. That's what we got. <laughs> so Ben's heading up on the roof. On each bolt, there is a stainless steel washer. It goes bolt, washer, L bracket. Then it goes through the roof. And on the inside, I'm gonna be throwing on some of these nylock fasteners. They have a nylon insert in the middle that acts as thread locker because once these get bolted on and the spray foam is on, we're going to lose all access to the back side of these bolts where the nuts are located. So it'll be a washer, a nylock, and before that goes on, I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to tighten these just snug so that they kind of perk up and start to sit vertical. And then we will attach the rails to them to pull them all into plane. And then with the rails attached, we will tighten them down the rest of the way. And then we'll go back up and get our rail height set because there's a slot in the top of those L feet that let you set the height of the rail. But because I'm painting the whole roof white, I might actually just go ahead and take the rails off at that point until after the roof paint is done. I don't know. We'll see, we'll just see where we land. So we got Matt brushing the anti-seize on the insides and you can see here, you know, these come out right in the center of the hat channel, and that's what we want. Perfectly centered. Perfectly centered. Yeah, Ben really nailed it. I can't take it. My bus is gonna turn out well because I'm trying to see how little of the work I can do because I might be the least talented person in the shop. So we're gonna go ahead and Matt's gonna coat that on. I'm gonna follow behind Matt and we're gonna throw on our washers, our nuts, and then get the initial torque set with this wrench. Uh, 
in a W start. Oh, it's gone. All right, you want to take a start chasing me? Yeah, there you go. All right, I'm ready, man. Grab your start, grab your start, grab your start. Hey, that one will be on your stop. All right, we've got all those loosely tightened. Things are starting to compress. We're gonna go up top and bolt the rails to the L feet so that they get all pulled into plane. And once they're bolted up, we'll come in here and do the final torque down on these nuts. Okay, so the beautiful beauty about these extrusions are these slots in here that accept the heads of fasteners. We got that, that square headed fastener slots into the rail and then we just slide those down until they line up and you can see here good butyl squeeze out. That's how we know we're going to end up with a nice watertight seal. We'll slide them down tighten them up and with the rail attached to these it will help further pull those all into plane and keep them from twisting while we tighten them down. Okay look we got, uh, let me give you the mom zoom here. We got the rail installed and Ben's torquing it down and then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go inside take my wrench and we'll fully tighten down all of the through bolts and because they're attached to the rail those brackets can't spin or turn and they'll be tightened down all in plane where they want to live. Just gave the final torque down on things up there. I'm gonna hop in the bus and, uh, or I'm gonna hop up here and show you all the butyl squeeze out that we got. You can see pretty clearly here, it just squeezes right out. We'll let this sit probably for a couple of days before we come back and what I'm going to do is trim this with a razor blade and come back in with either Sika Flex or Dicor Lap sealing, Sealant, depending on how I'm feeling. And I'm going to go around the perimeter with that very nicely and do a little ice cream dollop on the top. And then this is sealed and ready for primer and paint on the roof, which will come next. And I may or may not leave this rail on here and get it painted with the roof. Hard to say, but I don't know if you can see down that, but that turned out nice and straight. I'll catch it on tape. So Ben just measured our distances here just to see how parallel we did. We're at 70 and 5 16 back there and up here at the very front 70 and 5 16. How about that? And just a final shot on the inside to show you what we ended up with. So here you go. And you might notice I have left the framing off on the inside and that's because and I've had this happen before your bolt will almost inevitably somehow end up right where you want some strapping. So I'd rather have my bolts go in and then shift my strapping over left and right than have to like, you know, drill a hole and do all the stuff there. So inside is done and it's probably gonna be some time before I actually get to mounting uh, that stack of solar panels back there. But I wanted to show you what's going on and how we do it here at Chrome Yellow. Check it out, we're done. So I hope you found that informative. You might not have, but maybe it was entertaining. That is how we install our Iron Ridge XR1000 solar rack rails on our buses here at Chrome Yellow. Now there are other people out there who also have great videos. My friend Jonathan Roberts at Sojourner's Way, he put together a great video on how he does his racking rails. Very similar, he's using an eighth inch broken piece of metal flat stock for his L feet. That's another great option. But uh, his and I, very similar methods at the end of the day. That's gonna do it for this week's video. My name's Chuck Cassie. If you liked watching this and want more of this, make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Otherwise, best of luck on your project and we'll see you next week.